Now, last week on this show, I said that both sides of the, the same-sex marriage debate were becoming a bit too triggered. Well, I've definitely changed my mind this week, and it's definitely the, the left and the LGBT activists who uh, uh, appear to be getting triggered all the time just by people having opposing viewpoints. And, of course, the, the obvious example was their reaction to the traditional marriage posters that were distributed in Melbourne and Brisbane earlier this week. The uh, Australian traditionalist nationalist group were responsible for the ones in, in Brisbane. They had two sets of po posters. One was uh, d uh, protect the traditional family and the other one was it was a take on the, the ill-fated Dutch Airlines uh, pr uh, pride poster which said it doesn't matter who you click with with uh, uh, belt buckles. And of course people pointed out that uh, you know you need different buckles to uh, click together and so the the uh, these posters said obviously only one of them clicks but it was the probably the ones in Melbourne that uh, got the the most attention which uh, had the headline stop the fags we don't we can't well the unshackled can't confirm who is behind those posters we have been told by um, people in the Australian nationalist movement that it's this group called uh, Antipoden Resistance, but they're very elusive. And on those posters, it's not only said that, it also had a, a list of statistics about the abuse of, of children in same-sex uh, households. So the, the left have been crying... Um, you know, hate speech all week. I, I think the the ones put up in Brisbane, I think they were perfectly reasonable. Probably the ones in Melbourne uh, uh, overstepped the, the mark. But, you know, we do live in a democracy, as Malcolm Turnbull pointed out, we do have uh, free speech. I mean, if you don't like these posters, just, re you know, respond to their arguments. We don't live in a theocracy or a totalitarian dictatorship where we don't have, um, you know, free speech or where, where our thoughts aren't controlled by legislation, well, to a large degree. I think that these posters um, uh, need to stay true to the message. Um, I'm, just, I'm on the no side, but I, I can see that these posters can be very dangerous in changing public opinion the wrong way. So I urge everyone on the No campaign to keep it reasonable and keep it civil. But I think that the real culprits here are the LGBTQI, uh, whatever they call themselves, um, because they can't handle freedom of speech um, or debating ideas. Now, I think the, the biggest uh, uh, place where you can see this happen, or probably the most prominent, should I say, is... Uh, uh, Peter Van Oslo did an interview with Lyle Shelton uh, of the Australian Christian Lobby, and he did uh, an interview uh, as well. You know, both men were sitting on the couch, uh, the marriage equality fellow, and you could see that Lyle had the facts and the figures, you know, embedded into his brain. And um, the marriage equality fellow, he he got triggered, he got upset, he kept running away from the questions. Um, I, I I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay objective here, but I think that you can definitely see that one side uh, is being more factual, more reasoned, and one side's definitely being more emotive in this debate. Uh, I, I hardly think that uh, Peter Van Onslen is a, a good moderator. I mean, he's uh, been, you know, quite, uh, quite hysterical himself, saying that, you know, with this plebiscite, LGBT people are going to be like abused and bashed in the street, like really over the over the top language. Well, I think um, Van Onslen describes himself as a moderate, but I really think that his job as a journalist should be to moderate between the sides and not impart his opinion. If you want to watch opinion journalism, for God's sake, uh, watch uh, that Madden girl on um, uh, NSNBC or watch Andrew Bolt. You know, if you want, he should be a serious journalist. But instead, he's an opinion journalist uh, dressed up as a serious one. I think this is a real issue. 
And it's also been revealed that uh, uh, various local councils, uh, again, another problem with <laughs> local government, and also the ABC are offering counselling services to their LGBT employees for the duration of the plebiscite, which is, uh, it's... Well, it's, so they're basically, and this is uh, an argument that David Linehouse put forward as well, that basically you're saying that this group of people who supposedly have come uh, have come through all this oppression are, are so, you know, weak and fragile that they, they can't handle, you know, a, a debate which is, you know, si uh, simply about should, you know, marriage be uh, applied to same-sex relationships. Uh, Lion Helm, uh, I've met David, he's a very, and I think you have as well, Tim, uh, he's a very, very level-headed and reasonable man. Uh, he's a very principled libertarian. Um, I agree with him completely on economics. I'm a, a pure Austrian e economist. Uh, my, that's my beliefs, the Austrian school. Uh, but I don't agree with him on social policy here. I have to disagree with him. But his, his comment uh, that you refer to, that uh, that same-sex uh, people uh, can't cope with the rigour of such a debate is in itself uh, homophobic, and, and it, it really just goes to show uh, the Labor left's doctrine of intersectionality, breaking people up into kind of brackets, and how destructive it is. But I, I'm, I'm sure uh, I've, I've spoken with a, a few LGBT uh, people about this, and they all seem to be reasonable. Uh, about this debate. So I think that this idea that it's causing LGBT people harm uh, is blown up and it's completely out of proportion. Um, and it's just a tactic that the radical left are using to uh, suppress free speech. And of course, there was also the story that Australia uh, Post workers uh, won't have to deliver uh, mail regarding the plebiscite that they f uh, find offensive, which is. Uh, I, I mean, they have, a lot of them want to force, you know, Christian bakers to bake a cake, but they don't want to have to deliver the mail. Hypocrisy is rampant. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I just, I just can't take any more hypocrisy. I think I'm going to have hypocrisy overdose with these, uh, with this crowd. Um, the, the job of the post is to deliver posts. If my post didn't deliver me, um, say, let's, let's say, let's. Say I was a member of the Lib Dems or the Australian Conservatives and he was a green lefty and he chose not to deliver my mail. Where does it end? Seriously. The job of the post is to deliver mail and not to ask questions. Yeah, it's always been treated as a pretty serious offence to tamper with the mail. Yeah, well, I, it's actually a criminal offence. And uh, there's a heavy pie, uh, fine and uh, maybe there's even imprisonment because these are confidential documents. Um, and if you're sifting through people's mail to see if you don't like it or not, well, that's, that's uh, unacceptable. And of course, like they've, uh, we've talked about these posters, and, and it seems to be that uh, the, all the um, progressive uh, media outlets giving them years of positive coverage, it seems to be uh, not enough for them because they've held uh, a last-minute enrolment drive. Uh, probably by the time this uh, podcast is uh, released, the uh, in uh, the chance to update your enrolment details or register to vote in the plebiscite, uh, the deadline will have passed. So uh, on Wednesday night, a group of progressive media websites they blacked out their websites and they uh, they just had instead of their advertising just had directions how to vote yes in the plebiscite directions to the ac website and today i did a a live video uh, mtv australia across their three networks on foxtel from 6 a.m to uh, 6 p.m they just ran like 12 hours of uh, marriage equality propaganda Uh, Tim, uh, can you book me a plane ticket to North Korea? I don't think the propaganda will be any worse there, honestly. Where have we got to? Uh, a lot of people were saying to me when I uh, was streaming uh, what was uh, being put on MTV, they're like, that actually looks like, you know, they're doing hypnosis on us because it was really, like, a bizarre gra <laughs> rainbow graphic and they're like, well, this is, what are they trying to do? 
Have you seen the episode of The Simpsons where they uh, they get a bunch of Hawaiian dancers and they play uh, a Join the Navy song backwards uh, to kind of hypnotise people into joining the Navy? You know, it's uh, quite similar. And all this, like, uh, this last-minute drive to, you know, get young people enrolled, to, to vote yes, uh, that's the only reason they, they want them enrolled, it's, it smacks quite a bit of desperation, despite the fact they've said all throughout they're, they're confident uh, of victory, yet they're, you know, scrambling, really. Well, I think it, it, well, it shows uh, a fabrication, possibly, of the amount of support that they have. Now, Stephen Crowder uh, on on his uh, YouTube account did a very, very interesting uh, look at this um, on how they have thousands of people interested in events. They get them to congregate at a place where there's already a couple hundred people there and they claim it as their rally. Um, and with, with their filming tactics, he also talked about that, how they always have the camera out and, and so you can manipulate how many people actually have supporting them and I think that that's a tactic that they're using to actually get it across the line saying that everyone supports it uh, and you hate homosexuals if you're against it which is just ludicrous.